You're listening to the Great Canadian Aftermarket Podcast. Welcome to this special episode of My First Car, a new mini series. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, on the podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Andrew Ross. Now, over the last uh, six months or so, we've been bringing you uh, stories and podcasts from literally uh, around the world uh, about issues and uh, news that affects the automotive aftermarket here in Canada. Now, uh, we've certainly been hard at work to make sure that we uh, bring you a good package uh, every week. Uh, but as we hit the dog days of summer, we thought we'd uh, kind of take a little bit of a step back, give everybody a bit of a rest uh, and uh, bring you something a little lighter uh, over the summer months. And so uh, uh, what you might not know is that as we've been doing our interviews and having our guests on board, we've often been asking them about their first car. Now, uh, for a lot of uh, our guests that uh, had some profound impact on their uh, auto automotive aftermarket careers that followed. And uh, I suppose I'm no different. Uh, well, I guess I should start. I mean, uh, my first car uh, is uh, not quite a simple story uh, for me. Uh, good thing I, I came prepared. Now, growing up, we always had at least one Volkswagen Beetle in the driveway. Uh, so it was usually a Beetle and something else. Now, the first car that I, I think ever wheeled around was probably the Beetle. Uh, you know, an easy transmission to, to learn to drive stick on, that's for sure. Uh, but being not of uh, legal age to be driving, uh, it was, uh, you know, strictly uh, parking lots, et cetera, and, and maybe the occasional uh, sneak around the block. Um, so the first car that I actually drove regularly uh, was a uh, 72 Ford Maverick, which was mostly my mom's car. Uh, but like I think a lot of folks, they, they drove them to work, came back, and then uh, maybe not like a lot of folks uh, for my sister uh, and I, uh, that car uh, was in the driveway for the, for use as long as we were, uh, you know, prepared to put a little bit of gas in it. So I'm very fortunate, you know, that way. Um, that's kind of where the good fortune ends though because this, this is a ford maverick not the ford maverick that has just recently recently been introduced which seems very cool a 72 ford maverick like this beige inside and out in color in personality in performance with the straight six and uh well you know it it, it was it was actually a handful just to drive at regular uh, speeds uh, I do recall having a girlfriend in the car one time hitting a little bump on a country road and finding ourselves swapped ends and just missing the ditch on the other side. Uh, so that was kind of it. It also had other amazing features like the uh, ability to just stop on the highway. You'd be driving along and then it would just cut out. You'd coast down to the side of the road, crank it a few times and there it would go again. The other, uh, optional accessory, I'll call it, was the ever-present Kleenex box on the passenger wheel well. Uh, it was there to cover a hole. Uh, it was fine uh, until the middle of winter when you'd be driving over a slush-laden road and a geyser of slush would come streaming up between the passenger's legs. Not a great car at, at all, uh, but it is part of our history. The next quote-unquote quote unquote, first car uh, that I, I drove, uh, again, this was something that I uh, had a hand in the decision-making because I, I'd been working as a courier. And one of the vehicles that they had for the long distance uh, uh, guys, I mean, long distance, huh, you know, uh, based out of Toronto, but doing the longer runs instead of just the city runs was a uh, Volkswagen Rabbit diesel. Uh, I thought it was a great car, told my dad this, when it came time for him to finally get rid of uh, the Beetle that he had been driving since 1970, so this would have been about 1984. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I said, you know what, take a look at the new Volkswagens, take a look at the diesel. Uh, there was a diesel Jetta that was on the market, a couple of years old, 1980 diesel Jetta. Again, this is not the one, but it was exactly this. That green color, uh, 52 horsepower, I think, on the diesel. Uh, and uh, we drove that thing uh, literally into the ground. Now, after my uh, 
my father passed. Uh, I still drove it. Uh, so it was, I think, 20 years old by the time it finally died and was, was actually a great car. Now, this car has a good connection to what we'll actually get to in a minute, which was the first car I actually laid my own money down on. So after my dad passed, I took over this vehicle, uh, was, you know, on paper, the owner and all that kind of stuff. Did a lot of work uh, to keep it going. I remember replacing the injection pump one time. Uh, you know, that was a smelly, messy job, uh, but uh, also learned an awful lot about tuning the timing on the injection to get a little bit more oomph out of it. Not a lot, just a little. Uh, owning and driving this vehicle probably kept me my license. Uh, if I'd had something through those years uh, with a lot more horsepower, a lot more uh, kind of terminal speed, I'm pretty sure uh, I would have uh, had more conversations with the police, but uh, I used to joke that uh, getting it up to about 140 kilometers an hour on the highway wasn't an easy task. And that any time if there were a radar station uh, that would clock me, they'd see me zipping past in this thing, shake their heads, bang their radar gun, and think there's no way there's something wrong with this gun. Uh, <laughs> uh, nonetheless, uh, this car stood me through uh, uh, you know, a lot of years, I think there was about a quarter million kilometers when I finally snapped a half shaft on it, snapped that half shaft, leaving uh, work one day, parked it in the back nine, and then it immediately got, it was winter, it immediately got buried by uh, the snow plow, and it stayed there till spring under about 20 feet of snow. You know, it, I, had, I had replaced the engine once already. I had a young daughter at home, and when that thing emerged from the uh, glacier in the springtime, there, well, the message was pretty clear. There is no way you're taking our baby daughter in that old thing. So uh, that was it on days, but it did uh, serve its purpose um, as a tow vehicle for what was technically the first vehicle that I actually laid my money down on. Now, that, $4,500 for this. I don't know if you can see it, a little bit of reflections, and I apologize for that. 1985 Honda Civic race car was actually uh, the first car that I owned, put my own money down uh, and raced for one season uh, in the Honda Michelin Challenge Series. Uh, and that, uh, I'm I, I under that hood uh, constantly. Uh, you know, uh, setting valves, uh, had the cylinder head off, certainly at least one time that I can remember all manner of things. Of course, did about a, uh, a thousand brake jobs on it. Uh, and uh, for uh, for a lot of what uh, I learned, uh, you know, was just in the in the driveway and, and uh, with a shop manual and figuring it out. Uh, now, you know, I, I by that point, I, you know, obviously been around cars and helped my dad bring uh, engines in and out of the Beatles, uh, help, you know, as a kid. Uh, you know, I tightened and tightened up wheel nuts, uh, lug nuts on race cars since I was uh, five or six. So, you know, it was kind of natural, right? Um, I will say that uh, the automotive aftermarket service community is very fortunate that I didn't become a technician. Uh, didn't really have the patience for it. And, and uh, so, you know, here I am doing it this side of it, which I still love it. I don't work on cars anymore, uh, but I will never forget that, that uh, experience with the, the terrible Ford Maverick, uh, that um, real workhorse of a, a diesel Jetta that I used to tow my race car. Think about that. Uh, I remember pulling out of Most Port, uh, which is on the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park it is now, uh, and somebody saying, you know, hey, I didn't think you could do that with one of those. <laughs> I, of course, called back to them, well, you can't. <laughs> well, I guess you can. Anyway, that's those are my firsts uh, for uh, cars. Uh, certainly, I never forget about them. They certainly shaped uh, my view of uh, the aftermarket and more than anything else, uh, really uh, gave me a good ground and good foundation for having a tremendous amount of respect for uh, the automotive technicians who work on these vehicles uh, every day and keep them running uh, and, and keep us safe. Anyway, uh, as I mentioned, uh, over the coming weeks, there's going to be a number of My First Car episodes, and uh, well, we hope you enjoy them. 
take care everyone be safe be strong and uh you never know we might check in a little bit more uh over the summer uh, as uh, needs be all right take care everyone be safe be well